everyone and welcome to I'm Second Africa. My name is Donna and I have the absolute privilege of welcoming you to our In Conversation piece. This week we have the exclusive interview with Karen Green, one of my personal favourites and an absolute treasure to my heart. I love this woman. <laughs> she is just so special to, to both Dave and myself. But we have the opportunity of just chatting with her about her story that she filmed as a second on the watch. You would have seen Karen's story on episode three of the stories of I Am Second, which is screened presently on TBN Africa, Sundays at 4 p.m. on channel 343 DSTV or if you do not have such DSTV privileges, then you are welcome to live stream at 4 p.m. on tvnafrica.org. Alternatively, if you missed that program, there is a repeat on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. So make sure you catch it one way or another. It is absolutely incredible. And we are just so happy to have Karen join us today and sit back, relax, enjoy, comment, like, subscribe, share, all of those good things. And let us know what you think of Karen's interview with us. Shall I say it wasn't a happy childhood. My mom worked morning and she worked evenings, which left us uncovered. And a lot of things happen, a lot of things happen. I can remember uh, her leaving us under the care of uh, my neighbor next door. He used to tell me all the time that I had big, pretty legs, you know. And I can remember him um, asking me, won't you let me touch you? And uh, when he did, you know, he gave me money and, and there was a store up the street and I went up and got candy. Then there came a time where he said that, you know, I want you to let Lewis uh, lay on top of you. And I did, and I did. From there, the spiral began. By the time I reached the age of 13, I had a baby myself. And my mother got very angry. She had a boyfriend. I remember the boyfriend making advances at me. And instead of her dismissing him, she dismissed me. I ran into this guy. We got together. And I felt like he would take care of me and my son. I allowed certain things to happen. He hit me, you know, he, he put guns to my head. Surely he took care of us, but it came with a big price. These men were like 50, 60s. She would ask me, well, how much money did they give you? Did, did he give you some money? And I would tell her, yeah, well, you need to give it here, you know? So I would give it to her. I ran into this guy. He took me in and uh, he fed me drugs, crack cocaine. My son, he's seen all of this. I was very angry. I had 13 assault cases. I was sick of everything. It just really didn't matter. You know, I needed money to survive. I remembered how, you know, I went out with the older men. It was just and how they it would give me money. Crazy. This is the way I lived my life. Men were the way that I bought my food, were the way that I paid my rent. It just had gotten so bad. The street and men is all I knew. It got worse and worse. I didn't know anything else but to go to the street. Not only support my habit, but to make sure my son ate. And uh, I remember walking into a Dairy Queen and I asked him to feed my baby. And the lady told me, she said, anytime your baby's hungry, you bring him here and I'll feed him. I knew I had to do something to get my son up off the streets. You know, I would pray, literally pray, when I was out there. I remember going to get the drugs, doing what I had to do, prostitution, getting the money, coming back, getting the motel room, throwing the drugs on the bed, and asking God, please, please help me. 
after I got through praying, I would pick the drugs up and just continue to use. It came a point where I was just tired. I was so tired of my life. I was so tired of hurting. I was so tired. I knew they had a warrant for my arrest, you know. And uh, I asked the lady behind the desk, I said, don't you have a warrant for my arrest? And she looked at me and started laughing. I said, I just want to turn myself in. She said, baby, I can't find the warrant. I said, no, the warrant is there. It's there, it's there, it's there. In my mind, you say, you got this hot $20. You might as well go on back out this door and go on and get you, get you another hit and just go on. They can't even find a warrant. But something inside of me said, just sit there. And I sit there. And I sit there. And she said, baby, I found it. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And you know, I told God, I can't even see the time that they're talking about. I can't even see 25 to life. But God, whatever you do, I don't want to go back out here the same way I came in. Please help me. And I remember that's when my life began to change. That's when I surrendered because I didn't know nothing else to do. They had church down there. Church, I didn't do church. But just to get out of the dorm with all those women, I, I went to church. I began to hear what the pastor was saying. How so many times when we're in, the, um, when we've been through so much in our life, it becomes a cover and it covers our souls. You know, and it just, our souls begin to be just, it's just dark because there's so much that is covering our souls. But he said what the Spirit of God does and the Word of God does, it, be, it comes in and it begins to peel back the covers. And what happens is your soul begin to get light and you begin to gain strength where you can live. And when he said that, I said, Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I knew I had to change, but I didn't know how to change. And God, through his word, began to teach me how to change. I said, God, if you are God, and if you're the God that they say you are, then God, change me. Change me. He did just that. He changed my life. My name is Karen and I am second. So we just want to welcome everybody and say welcome. To yeah. in conversation with and tonight we get to speak to an incredible woman of God Karen Green and we just say thank you Karen for taking the time to sit with us and chat with us and just uh, yes um, talk us through the process and how life has been since filming that incredible mm. white chair film and so uh, first off I just want to say thank you and welcome yes <laughs> thank you for having me thank you i counted an honor to you know be able to do this interview with you guys thank you so much for considering me oh. <laughs> well from a personal perspective it's just been your your white chair film has been such an incredible encouragement to me mm -hmm. and um dave and i have used your film um in a variety of, sure. of places yeah. Yeah. and I will just say that the highlight for me has been when we spoke to a group of girls in a school in Soweto in South Africa mm -hmm. and how powerful your words spoken through that clip actually um, just 
those girls were so inspired um, mm. and we we had a a chance to actually pray with a couple of them and uh how they accepted christ and just the 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 lights went on you could see literally the lights went on and um yeah we just thank you for that and uh from friends back home as well after watching watching that clip Mm-hmm. They just wanted me to to express their their heartfelt thanks for you being vulnerable, and being open and actually sharing that story, because uh, there's there's friends that have actually gone through abuse and have been raped, and they just said the courage that it took for you to share that story mm-hmm. gives them hope to actually step out and continue and trust God and be bold in their journey as well and so thank you from from Mm -hmm. from all of those people back home to god be the glory you know absolutely it's all all about him you know i i would have never known that what life handed me would turn around and god would use it for his glory i would have never thought that but god knew and he knew he knew who and and win. Amen. So I just give him praise and glory. I want to say a little something here because before I did, I am second when God, when I first came home from prison and uh, I was walking this walk, I was on uh, Christian TV, you know, and they had a segment on there about South Africa and what was going on in South Africa during that time, you know, AIDS and, you know, how the young girls were being raped and, you know, in molested going trying to get to school and mm-hmm. oh it touched my heart so and I said God I, you got to let me get to South Africa you got to let me get there because those women need to know those girls need to yeah. know you know that there is hope regardless of what has happened to them you know <laughs> and I never would have thought <laughs> you see that, yeah it brings out <laughs> everything even to you. <laughs> <laughs> that i didn't even have to get out, up and go that god was gonna send his word amen, oh, amen. Come on. this has been just a just god just uh just doing what he do so graciously you oh. know um and for this this segment to be about South Africa and the, mm-hmm. the young ladies uh, that are in South Africa, it really has touched my heart. You know, <laughs> the hope that that is in Jesus Christ mm. that you really need to know and know that He will never leave them nor forsake them. Come on. Them, that yeah. regardless of what they've been through, it's not what they've been through; it's how they come out of it. Mm. And exactly. when they come out of it with Christ, they yeah. have the victory mm-hmm. and that is something that is so needed for them to just take and really put in their hearts mm-hmm. and, and believe one thing about this thing and i'm just going on i'm sorry Are you hearing <laughs> <all the laughs> about this thing that i found out that it's about what you believe yeah you know it's about I believe God that you can do anything Mm -hmm. and, and through faith and believe in God, you can overcome, you can take, you know, you don't have to go back and dip in the well of your past, keep drinking out of that water, but you can drink the water, that living water that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ, that brings liberty, that brings that, that, that freedom that is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I really am. And just so full because I'm so grateful to be able to speak to you, to let you know that God loves you. He loves you and he has a plan for your life, regardless of what. And that plan is good. Come on, share it. It is good. One of my favorites. Uh, scriptures it says now unto him that is able mm. <laughs> to keep you from falling the key okay. word in there is able god oh. is able to do anything but fail. that is so beautiful so i, and, I and want doesn't, you to isn't it just oh man we, we <laughs> I'm spend, sorry we, i'm already there oh, no, <laughs> We we, uh, we brought ours as well. Don't you worry. <laughs> so. already there. Amen. Praise uh, God. We, we, spent, we spent some time with um, friends a, a couple of weeks back. And uh, and they said, uh, man, if 
if you're gonna if you're gonna come into a a a, a vibrant uh, American church, uh, you you got to understand that there's one thing that is said, and it's like, won't he do it? <laughs> and <laughs> won't he do it? You know, and 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 he is able. He is able to tra- transform and change mm. the lives of so oh, many people. Yeah. You know, and we we think it's impossible. Uh, you said something really important about uh, just looking. Uh, that that don't keep your eyes on on what's taken place yeah, what don't what has your history happened already define you. yeah mm-hmm. um it's and uh, you. absolutely and I, and I read a quote that said if you, the, the the rear view mirror that you're looking at is bigger than the windscreen in front of you with a windshield in front of you then you've got to seriously take a look at uh, at your life and mm-hmm. and and understand that it's not the back that's the story it's what lies ahead. It's about the inheritance yes. that we have in Christ Jesus, and uh, and so we what? just we we could we could go. We, this could be a <laughs> preaching segment. I mean, come on, um, and, yeah. and and we know, but we want to know um, just a couple of things from my side, and then and then Donna's got a couple of questions that she wants to to ask you. But um, uh, let me let me start by this. We apart from thanking you for being with us. Uh-huh. Uh, people that are watching online with us now um, and while we are busy doing this uh, <laughs> drop comments um, uh, and uh, and just allow us if you're feeling already that what you've heard has inspired you because I'm so inspired about what Karen's shared already drop in a comment we are we uh, this might be recorded pre-recorded but we are watching live and so yes. we will interact live um, and so just please keep them going. And uh, if you feel that it's personal and you want to direct message us, then direct message us and we will be sure to, to connect with you. Um, and so just, uh, uh, Karen, four days ago, we were supposed to have this, uh, this interview with you. And, uh, and you, you were down, um, you were just not feeling well. But uh, again, we just want to say thank you so much. We know that uh, you've taken the medication and, uh, and praise <laughs> Jesus, you took a COVID test and you were negative and that's great. And, and, and so which allowed us to, to share now. And so we just greatly appreciate that. But I think one of the things that comes out of the white chair films that we see is that a lot of people think, okay, well, these were filmed six seven eight nine years ago um uh, and a lot of people want to know like what are these people up to now you know um how has the white chair film defined their uh their lives or going allowed forward you or allowed you opportunities and so the, the question is twofold uh the first the first is this because I, I i suffer from yeah, I'm going to say it out loud, verbal diarrhea. I just carry on speaking. And so, <laughs> so Donna, Donna tells me when to stop. Or um, squeeze or she'll squeeze my knee. But the first question is, is um, how, how has speaking from that white chair, uh, you know, just given you the opportunities that you've had now? Um, and what are you up to now? That's, that's the first one. And then once you lead, uh, allow that to lead into or you could change it around. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, we met you a few years ago and, uh, and uh, you shared a story with us that what you shared on the white chair on that day of filming wasn't necessarily what you wanted to share um, what she and, had and what to you share. had planned to share. <laughs> and, and, you were, and you had questioned whether um, this would probably lose friends and or whatever you know they come yeah. in, gone out. <laughs> I so, did not know I did not know when I finished I said well do, do the, are they serious <laughs> do they know <laughs> what they have asked me to do you know so when I sat in the chair and I began to speak and uh, just went through it you know and when I got to the end there was silence I said oh, oh they want me to get up and get out of here <laughs> you know but when they turned the light on you know, I can, I seen them embracing mm-hmm. what God had did. You know, it, it really, I, I really wasn't sure about what I was going to say and, you know, what was going to really take place. But I knew that if I allow God to do what he does mm-hmm. in, in me, 
uh, speak, I knew that it would, you know, be about him. And that's what it was about. What John told me, he said, now, I just want you to come down and just tell your story, tell what God has done. I said, I could do that, you know? And when I got in there, I did that. But I did not know the effect that it would have. I was at church, you know, after doing the I am sick, I, love this. I was at church, you know, and I go to the potter's house, you know, and I was at church and this guy walked up to me and said, are you Karen Green? And I said, yeah. He said, oh, I've heard your story. I said, what story? You know, <laughs> I was baffled, you know, and he said, didn't you do I am second? And I said, yeah. He said, your story has went viral. Well, I didn't know nothing about viral. <laughs> I, didn't know nothing about, I didn't know anything about all of that. But uh, I went and I told my son and my son said, oh, mom, let me go on there and show you what he's talking about. And that's when I found out that God had used my mess. Come on. For oh. Absolutely. And it was just, phenomenal you know and from that point uh the door you know began to open you know and people began to you know uh sought after you know and ask Karen would you speak or would you tell your testimony and I was like Lord I would have never thought that this would be a message that you would use but through that I have I've had opportunities to travel mm. to, i want to say this first to god be the glory yes yes amen be amen because everything that has happened it has happened because of god yeah. yes and i began to open doors and i asked him to give me the strength to walk through those doors that mm. i had never been through before and every <laughs> time i opened my mouth i said god you have to speak because this is about you. And you know Come what? On. Every time he showed up and he oh spoke. God. And because wow. he spoke, lives were changed. Mm. And that's why I say to him, be the glory. Yes. Because this is his testimony. That's right. This yes. is his will for my life. Mm -hmm. And to him will be all the glory. Amen. Amen. And as Amen. that began, you know, um, there was a time that, you know, I got it already began to prick my heart about uh, you know doing um uh, outreach or doing a ministry for women you know i didn't know what right. you know the first woman i ever ministered to was my mother oh. and uh and a couple of days later she died but that was the first time i ministered she was the first woman i ministered to oh and what i told my mother was oh. mom there's nobody that could love you like God can love you. Yeah. And I knew then that that was a mending that took place between us. Amen. And that she really received that. Yeah. And she told me, she said, you know what, Kay? You're so right. God is what I need. And from that point, I, I just knew that God wanted to do something. And what I did is I followed the Holy Spirit. Yes. I got busy in my church and through volunteering in my church, you know, God birthed this ministry in me. And through that, I began to go forward and do the things in which he had called. Now, he had to set things in front of me. You know, let me say this, that it has been a journey. It has been a journey, you know, and, and through this journey, I'm getting to know this God mm. <laughs> that I encountered. Oh. <laughs> it's oh. wonderful. It's about relationship, you know, yes, it's about having an intimate relationship that you don't have to draw back from or be in fear of that it's going to go away that it is just there and it gr gets greater and greater each level wow. amen so amen. as i'm going through this and god began to open these doors and he began to direct me through you know this ministry was birthed <laughs> and mm -hmm. let me just say he had to train me 
through that. You know, let me, yeah. <laughs> listen, yeah. God will take you and he will just walk you like you're a baby through it, you know, oh. and he will teach you huh, through his Holy yes, Spirit. You know. <laughs> he will teach you through his Holy Spirit, all that oh. needs to be taught. And then wow. what he will do, he will surround you, mm. his people to help yeah. you hold up the arms and the pillows and what he has called you to do he will put mm -hmm. people in the areas where you don't have it but other people do you know <laughs> he has taught me so much, he has oh, taught me so much yes. through this. this process but the most important thing that i have got through this journey is a vibrant relationship with him through that mm -hmm. relationship all things are possible Yes. Mm, sure. The haven of love was burnt <clears throat> through this relationship with God and doors were open where I began to go into the prisons. I joined, I became a, a member of an international prison ministry, began to travel all over the country, giving the testimonies of who God is and what he can do if you just surrender. Amen. Sure. Uh, not only that, he began he is just so awesome he's so awesome <laughs> that is so true <laughs> so through that through that um uh the ministry of the haven of love was birthed and mm. uh, the door started opening in our city i began to be a relation listen god will take you before great men you can yes. <laughs> listen who, who have heard of having church in the courthouse come uh, on there you go I, who have heard that? But when God is in it, listen, anything exactly. is possible. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I became an advocate for the judges, for the courts of the county of Dallas. And wow. I would go up in the courtroom and I would be begin to talk to the women, uh, mentor the women, but also, you know, introduce Jesus. Mm. Uh, not only that, to the judges <laughs> and to the district attorney. Do you hear what I'm saying? God is so awesome. Oh, uh, one, 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 uh, one afternoon, the judge came and she asked me, "Say, can I go to church with you?" I said, "Yeah." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, <laughs> you can go to church with me." And that Sunday morning, that next Sunday morning, I got up and got to church, and there she was. Oh my goodness! There she was. There she was. Because I'm a praiser and I'm a worshiper, you know, and uh, I go to the potter's house, so, you know, it's just off, you know. <laughs> and I was just praising God and giving God the glory, and she was patting me, and I was like, I'm okay, I'm okay. She <laughs> raised her hands, you know. <laughs> and I didn't tell you, she gave her life to Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Listen, the next time we went into the courtroom, it was totally different. They say she began to pray over her food. Her staff say she began to, you know, be more um, tolerant. <laughs> but you know what? We never know what God is going to do. That's right. That's the reason, you know, when we're yielded and we're yielded vessels, mm. he can use us. And that is my prayer, you know, that God, I will just stay yielded, that I will hear you, that I can do whatever you want mm. me to do, because that's what matters. And only what you do with for Christ will last. Amen. So Amen. this haven of love had taken me up into the courts. Uh, we, uh, I, I go to, we have uh, started uh, classes in the jails where we do codependency classes. We do Bible study. We do art therapy. We do mentorship. And this has been just something that has taken off in our city. And um, it it just boom. Uh, we joined forces also with Dallas Police, Dallas Sheriff Department. They started a project here in Dallas called the PDI, which is the Prostitution Diversion Initiative. And we would go out with them and we were able to minister to the women as they bring them off the street. And that was so one of the things that my heart desired so. And we built relationships with them too. <laughs> so we go in and we do training with them, you know, helping them understand the life in which these women are leading, living in, the things that are needed to be, excuse me. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry, in place for these women to continue to grow stronger. So he has blown my mind. Oh. Uh. He has wow. blown my mind. Amen. I have, uh, uh, we, uh, one of our uh, commissioners here in, in Dallas, uh, she was so, she's a firecracker and they were trying to, you know, kind of stop it. And she got up there and she advocated and it's still going on till today. And I just thank the Lord for that. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about the pro- another little process that went on. Can I talk about it? Sure. <laughs> you know, I had a son. You know, I talked about my son, right? Oh, Jesus. And um, how he was out there with me and that when it, he seemed to give my life to Christ, he gave his life to Christ too. And God changed his life and straightened him up and he went to college and he ended up going to uh, um, seminary, uh, Christ for the Nations, and uh, he is now a pastor. Come on. (laughs) You You hear what I'm saying? And I'm seeing this to say that because of one life changing, many lives are connected to Mm -hmm. one life changing. Mm. For sure. This is the reason why it's so important that when we surrender all, that we allow God to lead us and guide us Mm -hmm. in the direction that he would have us to go. Because Mm -hmm. it is his purpose. That's what I found out. He didn't save me for my purpose. (laughs) He saved me for his purpose. Amen. And that's what I am. I'm about God's business. Amen. This has been such a journey for me. The haven of love has been established for almost now 17 years. And it has just been going. And women are coming and I'm seeing their lives change. Uh, We have volunteers that come from all over the city to volunteer with us. Uh, We're just seeing God just change. Amen. But the most important thing that I have found through all of what he's done is my relationship with him. Mm. Without that, I am nothing. You know, I am a spoiled child of Christ. (laughs) (laughs) I I just love him so much. We we could uh, we could just listen to you for days. Oh, no, I promise you. I, I want to listen. stop because I can talk. I'm like, I, yeah, put just... yeah, maybe may on the same oh, thing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to hear some of the questions. Or on, did I God, answer God, your God. question? Did I answer your question? You did. And then, yeah. you, and then you went to answer some and more. Some. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> um, this guy, when you said about you know who could, you could never have dreamed. Um, what God had planned for you and I think that's one of my favorite verses is Ephesians 3 verse 20 where God will do immeasurably more than you could ask or dream or think Mm -hmm. and you you're just a prime example of of how God can just blow your mind at what he's got in store for us Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, and so I just wanted to ask you um what advice would you give a person that would be in the same position as you found yourself? So it may not just be physical abuse, but obviously emotional abuse. How do you, or how do you approach somebody in, in that sort of situation and share your story with them? You know, it's, it's, some of them are so traumatized that it takes, you know, you being just real, real with them, you know. Um, one of the things that I do when I'm out on the streets and, and they are traumatized and they are in the situation I was in, I just say, God loves you. Yes. I just want you to know God loves you. Mm. I'm not here to stop you from doing what you're doing, but I just want you to know that God sees you and God loves you. Yeah. And when I say that, it breaks a little something in them. And they have an ear to hear. And uh, when I say, you know, I, I've been there and uh, I've walked these streets and immediately they turn 
and I know the pain in which you've gone through, you know, you know, and sometime uh, in the treatment programs, when the women are going through that, you know, I let them know I've been raped, I've been molested, you know, but I'm not what happened to me. Yes. That is just what happened to me. But you, you are not what happened to you. You are a, a, a child of the king that loves you mm-hmm. so much. Yeah. And there is something so much greater than what you've been through. And sometimes, you know, they, they can, you know, because of the hurt and the pain, you know, the disappointment and the, the rejection, it's hard for them to receive it. But you know what I come back and say? I say, you know what? I know what you're thinking, but let me just tell you, he's real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. he's real and he knows what you've been through you don't have to tell me you yes. don't have to tell me you know but he knows and because mm-hmm. he knows i know i'm in the right place and yes. we're here together you know i know that things can change because mm-hmm. of prayer because of prayer because of one word mm-hmm. one word will change your life you know one word changed my life and that mm-hmm. word was, I will not compromise mm-hmm. where I am today because of where I've come from in my past. Come on. <laughs> one word. So I will good. not compromise. <laughs> That's one of the things that I tell the women when I'm out there, you know, that, you know, God has a life, you know, and he will do what's needed. To That's right. concerning your life you know a lot of times people when they come to christ they have the wrong perspective perspective and they're thinking i gotta come and i've gotta come right i gotta yeah. leave everything behind you know i gotta stop no no you come to god and you come just as you are mm-hmm. god will stop God will give you the strength to stop. Mm -hmm. God will give you the strength to pull back. God will give you the strength to stop using. God will give you the strength to stop, you know, doing whatever that sin is. God will give you the strength. Mm -hmm. So you come to God, come to Jesus just as you are. Oh, yes. Well, that's who he is. You know, the Bible said when he called Lazarus out, he began to unravel him. (laughs) That's what he does in our life. He calls us out. And then he say, oh, I got to take that field. I got to take that. Oh. And I got to take that. He said, I'm going to send some helpers. And they're going to help me just kind of pull some of that off those scabs. Amen. And oh, when a great him, manager. Will, Come on, that is beautiful. Be whole in him, you know, whole in him. Amen. So, oh, amen. Amen. That is so cool. I just him for calling me. <laughs> I can, I can do that. Yes, absolutely. Eh? Oh man, unravel me, Jesus. Eh? Unravel man, me, Jesus. Like you. Amen. Oh, we we do a uh, we do uh, a curriculum called Untangling Relationships, and what that does is untangle everything that you have been imparted in things that have you know come from generations and things that you have been a part of that you have grown up. Mm-hmm. And you become a part of who you are and god begins to untangle that and begin to untangle it with the truth That's the truth of who and what mm-hmm. it is that he created you to be come one on. of those things that we're talking about <laughs> is being in denial you know being a a, a distorted perception you know, mm-hmm. and that's what happens. You know, the enemy comes in and he lays those seeds early that our mm-hmm. perception of life will be destroyed. But God comes in with his healing virtue and he began to take away all of that fuzziness. And it's just like putting on a pair of glasses and you're <laughs> seeing the truth and you're seeing it for what it is. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. <laughs> So I'm 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 just talking, y'all. So, but this is I I say you can carry on talking, Karen. Honestly, (laughs) praise God. But God is so good. So good. Did I answer that question? Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, more. And again, you did. You did the, so the other more. question that I had for you. So thank you for that. You're making my job a lot easier today. Uh, <laughs> um, I just wanted to. Uh, there was one thing that we wanted to find out from you. 
You mentioned in your story about the lady from, I think it was Dairy Queen, that said you can bring your son and feed him whenever he needs it. Mm -hmm. Did you ever, um, after uh, you had given your life to Christ, and did you ever go back and just share with that lady what had happened? <laughs> you know, uh, there were so many places that, you know, God didn't allow me to go for the first years or so you know but uh that dairy queen is still there but she was not there uh. but my son took his sons uh. <laughs> and fed his sons there amen so uh you know it was just a you know just you become know such a great place <laughs> yeah, it's become a great That's place yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. but yeah there were many others along the way that uh, that I know one of the ladies that I met while I was out there in my mess, and she was really a woman that was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And, mm. and uh, she said, I seen you one night and you were standing on the corner. And she said, I began to pray, God, just lose her, just set her free. <laughs> Amen. And... <laughs> And I came back to her. And when I seen her, she started praising God. I thought I was going to have to. She just, <laughs> oh, my God. She church right Come That's, on. Oh, my goodness. Karen, you. Oh, man. Honestly. Well, <laughs> well listen. Praising God. Oh Karen, God. we, we could. So it has been a, a journey with the Lord. And let me just man. say, it has it's been an awful journey <laughs> well this is this has probably been one of our best oh second my. editions ever for sure uh, my goodness. just in terms of 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 speaking to you and then uh um uh ah so so before i close off uh -huh. we just wanted to know that you know what is your what is the ultimate your ultimate go-to scripture when oh. you know when when things i i just are challenging or or you know whatever you're going through uh just you know <laughs> share with us um uh, i'm not going to say briefly or quickly i'm just going to say just share you, with us that, that, share. that, that go to scripture that uh, that you just well, find just great i help. often i often i mean it's just it's been my go-to scripture since i came out mm. and it was jude the first chapter 24th verse, 24th verse, it says, now unto him that is able to keep me from falling. Mm. And he presents me faultless before <laughs> the glory, oh. the presence of his glory in exceeding joy. Come now on. unto him that is oh. able. Now unto him. Now when things get hard, when things get looking a little fuzzy, I say now unto him. Mm -hmm. He's able. Yes. It's not even about me. God, you're able. Us. You're able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above yes. all that I could ever do. So, God, I turn this over to you. Come yes. on. Hey. That is my go-to scripture. And to present us faultless through Jesus, before, right? Before um, his glory. Oh, with man. exceeding great joy. Sure. With exceeding great joy. <laughs> One of my and, Oh, one of my God. favorite favorite um books of the bible is ephesians and you know in ephesians chapter one where i mean right at the beginning where it just speaks about how this the our, our father through election chose us you know yeah. and predestined us before the foundation of the world you know was put into yeah. place he he chose us and he knew what was going to take place and then he yeah. and then and then he knew what needed to happen and that was yeah. to 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 send jesus <laughs> the only perfect person that that would come and and lay down his life for us that we one day when we are before the very throne of god because of jesus jesus becomes our advocate that we might be presented holy and blameless before the mm -hmm. father and and so and so that and jude scripture just ties so beautifully into that 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 jesus is is the one you know that that we need yeah, to do. that's a good one it goes on to say we're sitting in heavenly places with him right Come on. our spirits are sitting in heavenly places with him then oh. we're not our spirits are already there it's there we go right here <laughs> <laughs> you know 
it, you know, we're already there. It's our friend. Oh, Amen. Well, 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 you said you said that God sent South Africa to you, but just know this: that there is always a place. And people are watching now, and they're probably thinking, "When is Karen going to come down to South Africa?" Because man, we need to book her. <laughs> and uh, and so we just wanted to just say, Karen, uh, our house is open. Amen. You know, we told you that a few years ago, and we're telling you again now that it's if ever there's an opportunity <laughs> that God presents uh, to allow you to travel, and South Africa is on the cards, no, please come. That, uh, that You've we, got a home. <laughs> we have a home. We, we I could am so to you. wanting to go. I am hey. so looking forward to stepping on the soil and just uh, loving on those women and just, oh my yeah. goodness, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. Amen. We, Amen. we could, we could, uh, we, oh. I think we did, we did say before we started the interview, hey man, we got about 20, 25 minutes that we're going to just be speaking to you about. And uh, we know that if you're watching online, that has gone way past that. Anyway. But you know what? We don't care because <laughs> God has spoken. Yes. And uh, and I hope that your ears have been sensitive to what he has spoken and about. And, spoken. Uh, and, that, and that you really opened your hearts. And what Karen has shared the, uh, um, with us right now has been so important. And just this incredible scripture found in Romans 8.28. Um, and I will read it. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. Karen spoke about understanding in her journey that it wasn't about her anymore. It was about him and his purpose for her. And, and friends, all that we need to know is that when we place him first in our lives, we understand his purpose for our lives, his will for our lives. That's when the exceedingly abundantly, the more happens because when we open ourselves to him, he's able to open up the world to us. And so, and so, um, uh, it's come to the end uh, of this, but before we go, uh, if there's anybody online, yeah, that is watching, you've never accepted Jesus as, as your Lord and Savior, you've watched Karen's white chair film. You've seen the absolute beauty of what God has taken mm -hmm. place, not only in her life, but I mean, look at this woman, just the picture of God's glory, grace, yes. and beauty. Uh, and she has spoken in incredible love. Mm -hmm. That's a love that she has only received from the father. Mm -hmm. And so that's the love that the father is inviting you to become a part of tonight yeah. and so if you feel like you uh you want to take that next step yes um we're going to ask karen to pray for us now and if that is you please you are most welcome to um the whatsapp our whatsapp number is going to appear at the bottom of the screen um but not only that you're able to email us at info at imsecond.co.za um, or even go one step further, make it personal. It's dave at imsecond.co.za or donna at imsecond.co.za. And we'd love to uh, just reach out and just to be with you in that journey or just drop a comment in the section and we, will, we would love to reach out. But if that's you tonight and you want to take that next step, God has spoken to you tonight. Um, this is an opportunity. The invitation is here. It's free. You don't have to pay for this. This is not one of those meetings where we're going to ask you for money. We just want to share Jesus and share the hope that we have. We want to share that with you. Um, and so, Karen, won't you do us the honor of, of praying for, um, for South Africa and for those that want to, um, want to accept Christ and take that next step in their spiritual journey? Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever think or do for ourselves to the only wise God. Father, we just thank you and we praise you for this time. We thank mm -hmm. you because we know you to be the God above all gods, Lord. Mm -hmm. We sure. thank you. Thank you. We decrease even the more, God, that you may increase in our lives, God. Now, God, we pray for those, God, right now that don't know you, but God, that has that prick 
in their heart that they want to know you, God. Father, we just ask that you would come in like a mighty Russian wind and touch like only you can, God. Father, we believe in our hearts. We confess with our mouth Mm. that Jesus died and he rose on the third day, that we would have this opportunity to give you our lives. Mm. Lord, take our will, take our lives, and teach us how to live. In Mm. Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Oh, wow. Karen, Mm -hmm. it's been such an honor and privilege yet again just to have you online. Mm. We appreciate you so much, and uh, we just pray the Lord's favor over what you are doing for him, and we just pray that there be many, many more people that uh, come across your path and that uh, you are just able to to influence, to encourage, and uh, just to have an opportunity to to speak into their lives and, and share the love of Christ. So I love you, South Africa. I love you, and I'm going to be praying for you. Every day. I pray Thank for you. So you. Much. Amen. 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 I love both of you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> we love you as well and so thank you so much for those of you that have joined us um and we look forward to our next in conversation piece and again uh, from us to you we love you jesus loves you um may he win and may you lose we ask this in jesus name cheers (laughs) 